Greetings, fellow Kerbonauts. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program. My name is Rice, and today, let's talk about the real Solar System mod. Now, let's say you've been playing Kerbal Space Program long enough that you've effectively mastered the game, or rather, you consider yourself pretty darn good at it, and you're ready for a bigger challenge. So then you decide one day that you want to tackle the real Solar System mod, which has realistic scaled planets that are pretty much uh, identical to the planets that we have here in the real solar system. You want more difficult, larger Delta V requirements, and you essentially just want a bigger challenge in the game overall. Well, kudos to you. <laughs> Real solar system is a lot of fun. However, there are a couple things that you need to take into consideration when you jump into real solar system. And one of the most important decisions that you'll be making is deciding which fuel mod you want to use. Because you'll quickly learn that with the scaled up planet Earth and the fact that it takes roughly 9,000 meters per second delta V just to get into low Earth orbit means you're going to need something a little bit more fuel efficient than the current stock model that the game provides for you. So the two main ones that we'll be taking a look at today are the Smurf mod, otherwise known as the Simple Module Adjustments for Real-ish Fuel Mass Fractions, <laughs> made by Bulkhead Profiler, and the ever-famous Real Fuels mod by Nathan Kell. Okay, so which fuel mod is better? Well, let's take a gander at the popular one first, and let's see how the Real Fuels mod stacks up. Now, this is a simple rocket built with stock parts, designed to carry about 8.3 tons into low Earth orbit using the Real Fuels mod and also the Real Solar System mod. And what's really neat about this launch vehicle is it pretty much represents about the average performance you're going to get out of the Real Fuels mod. Now, of course, your mileage will vary depending on what your experience is like with building rockets in this game and also how much performance you can get out of it. However, um, from my point of view and my experience playing with the with this specific Real Fuels mod and also with the, the other uh, fuel mod, Smurf, um, this rocket pretty much represents roughly about what my experience was like and the sort of numbers and performances that I got out of it. Okay, so what do the actual numbers look like? Well, the lifter itself weighs 302.6 tons, and as mentioned earlier, the cargo it's carrying is 8.3 tons. So what that means is, for every ton of cargo that we want to send into low Earth orbit, we're going to roughly use about 36.46 tons worth of lifting engine and fuel to get that one ton of cargo into space. And that's using the real fuels mod with probably some of the most common fuels that we use if we, when we play with the real fuels mod, which is, in this case here, using kerosene, liquid oxygen, and solid fuel. The second stage itself uses aerosene 50 and nitrous oxide. Now, the total amount of Delta V that this lifting vehicle provides, assuming, of course, that there's no atmosphere, is 9,153 meters per second, which is actually pretty respectable, and it provides some spare Delta V also, just in case there's a little bit of margin for error um, during our launch, say, just in case we have an inefficient launch profile. Now say that you're also playing career mode and you want to take into account the amount of cost it takes to launch a certain amount of tonnage into orbit. Well, another interesting statistic about this launch vehicle, which is a pretty good generalistic idea as to how much it costs per ton to send into orbit using the Real Fuels mod, is that this specific launcher itself uh, costs approximately 98,344 Kerbal Bucks. <laughs> and uh, considering the tonnage that we're sending into orbit, what that equivalates to is about 11,848 Kerbal Bucks per ton. Which actually isn't all that bad. Of course, it's a lot more expensive than, say, if you were playing stock Kerbal Space Program with the stock Kerbal system without real solar system. However, considering you're playing with planets that are 10 times larger, in scale than the original stock version, the cost is evidently going to scale up. Uh, however, even with the scaled up cost, it's still pretty respectable, provided that you play the game smartly. 
Now let's reload the game again, this time replacing the Real Fuels mod with the Smurf mod. And we're going to be using a rocket that's pretty similar to the one that we use with the Real Fuels mod. Now the first thing you're going to notice about this rocket is the major difference between the two is that this one doesn't have any solid rocket boosters attached to it. One of the interesting characteristics that I found about the Smurf mod that was a little bit different from the real Fuels mod is that playing with this specific fuel mod meant that my rockets had a tendency to have higher thrust to weight ratios than if I had played with the real Fuels mod. And I had less reliance on radial boosters or SRBs. Oftentimes when I played with the Real Fuels mod, I had to attach a lot of radial engines in order to make the rocket more efficient during its launch. It added a little bit to the part count, but when I played with the Smurf mod, I could cut down a little bit with the part counts and just stick with single rockets without radial boosters. Made things a little bit easier too. Now, what do the stats on this one look like? Well, believe it or not, the actual hard numbered stats on the Smurf mod are not all that different from the Real Fuels mod. Now, because the Smurf mod tends to use just your regular liquid fuel and oxidizer, rather than all the complex different types of fuels and doodads and cryogenics and, and whatnot <laughs> that the Real Fuels mod affords, the rocket tends to be a little bit lighter. Additionally, it doesn't have any radial SRBs attached to it, so that brings the lifter weight to about 298.65 tons, which really isn't all that much lighter anyways. The cargo is 8.3 tons, exact same weight as the previous Real Fuels rocket, which brings the lifter per ton of cargo to 36.2 tons. Now, one of the more profound differences I found between the two mods was the total amount of delta V per weight of fuel provided. So for the Smurf mod and this specific rocket, the total amount of delta V that we had on this launch vehicle was 8,812 meters per second, which is a little bit smaller than the real fuels mod, so it gave us a little bit less margin for error. So we had to afford a little bit more of an efficient launch profile in order to get this vehicle into orbit. Now for all you career mode players taking cost into account, well, vehicles that were built with the Smurf mod tended to be a little bit more expensive than the real fuels mod, even without the radial engines. So the cost of this lifter was 103,918 Kerbal Bucks, which equivalated to about 12,596 Kerbal Bucks per ton of cargo sent into space. Now, because the Smurf mod utilizes simple liquid fuel and oxidizer, it actually provides something that the Real Fuels mod cannot, in that the mining equipment in the stock Kerbal Space Program game, that's the drills, the converters, uh, the ore storage tanks, all of it can still be used. So you can actually go up to the moon and you can mine for resources and use that to refuel your spaceships to continue to explore other planets. Because the Real Fuels mod utilizes complex fuels like aerosene, hydrazine, kerosene, and whatnot, it doesn't lend itself well towards mining for resources, at least at the time of this recording. So if you plan to use the Real Fuels mod, be prepared to send a lot of refuel missions from Earth to go up to refuel your spacecraft. Okay, so now that we've collected our data, how do the two mods compare? Both pretty much accomplish the same thing. They're both designed at heart to help the player play the real solar system mod and adds a certain layer of complexity to the game that you otherwise wouldn't see in the regular stock Kerbal Space Program game. However, where the two differ is one is a little bit more challenging, whereas the other one has a focus on ease of use. Real Fuels tends to be a little bit more fuel efficient. However, the Smurf mod tends to have better thrust to weight ratios. In my experience, Real Fuels tends to be cheaper in career mode games. However, the Smurf mod tends to be a little bit less complex and a little bit simpler to use. 
Real Fuels tends to be a little bit more realistic and seems to be designed for players who want to experience a real challenge and feel that sense of accomplishment for overcoming certain obstacles and milestones when it comes to learning about what it really takes to put a vehicle into orbit. Because the Smurf mod has characteristics that are similar to the stock Kerbal Space Program game, it still keeps mining relevant and allows the player to go out there and mine for resources so that he doesn't have to continue to send refueling missions from Earth to refuel his spacecraft. Because Real Fuels offers so many different types of fuels and fuel mixtures, it creates a little bit more of a robust research tech tree in the career mode of the game so that the player can experience what it's like to develop new different types of fuels and to make his engines more efficient as he goes out there and explores the solar system and collects science. However, with the Smurf mod, because you're not worrying about realistic things like engine burnouts or whether or not vapor is clogging up your fuel lines, you can focus on building more simplistic spacecraft that can pretty much cut down on the part counts making for a more intuitive and easier gameplay experience. So all in all, what does this add up to? Which one is actually better? Well, in actuality, both of these mods are excellent, and they both stand on equal footing depending on what your playstyle is. Personally, however, if you just started playing the real solar system mod, and you're just learning how to navigate this much larger, more extensive solar system, I would highly recommend that you start playing with the Smurf mod. However, if you're ready for a bigger challenge and you want to get a little bit more out of your career mode gameplay, absolutely go for the Real Fuels mod. Both of these mods here are excellent for what they provide. Both are pretty challenging and both of them provide their own strengths and weaknesses. Well, that about wraps up this video. I hope this video was informative and helped ease your transition into playing the Real Solar System mod. And this is Rice signing off. I will see you all next time.